Hi guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to another one of my videos and it is 2021 and this is my first video for this year and in this video I'm going to be talking about how you can handle your Flutter application state using the Redux library. So let's get straight into it. Let's first try to understand how the state management works using Redux. So in Redux architecture, it actually uses a unidirectional data flow which means that the store will hold the state of the application and any event that happens in the application represents an action. Whenever an action is triggered, it will dispatch the action to the reducer function and the reducers will then go and update the state. And whenever there is a change in the state, it will update the view, which is a user interface. So this diagram represents the state management using Redux. And we can see the unidirectional flow that's happening between the action, reducer, store, and view. We can also include something called a middleware, which processes the action before it gets dispatched to the next reducer. A typical use case for this is to process calls to APIs. Now let's start by having a look at our example closely. So I have built a project in Visual Studio Code. Uh, with an example that represents how a Flutter Redux application would work. This example is available on GitHub and I'll leave the link for the project below in the description. So let's first start off by running the project and having a look at the demo of the application. So I have my emulator starting up. So that's my Redux demo application over there. So it has a simple form which has a font size drop down list, a bold and the italics checkbox and some text present underneath. And then there is a button that calls an API. So when I change the font size, it actually changes the text and I can set the text as bold and italics. So all the state for this application is actually managed using Flutter Redux. And I can also click the load users button and this basically generates a list of random users using the random user generator API, which is at this URL. So it will generate a list of 10 users. So once I click it, it will show me a list view control with a list of 10 users. So this is a demo app that I have created for Redux. Now let's dig into the code and understand how our project is working. So this is a top level view of my project. Under the lib folder, I have the model folder, Redux folder and the state folder. The users.dart defines the widget for the user screen. The home.dart defines the widget for the home screen, which contains a drop down list and the checkboxes for bold and italics. The main.dart defines the main function which runs my Redux demo app. The app.dart builds my material app and it defines the routes. So in my application, I've got two routes. One is the home screen and another is a user screen. Under the model folder, I have the user model.dart and this dart file defines my user class. Within the Redux folder is where my most of my Redux workflow is defined. So I have the actions, the middleware and the reducers and the selectors and the store available under here. So if I go into the actions, you can see that I have the actions.dart and I define the various actions that are triggered in my application. So when I click and unclick the bold checkbox, I have the toggle bold action. When I click and unclick the italics checkbox, I have the toggle italics action and then I can change the font size. So I have the set font size action and I also have a button to fetch the API data. So I have the fetch API data action and then I also once the API data is loaded, I have the API data loaded action. And within my middleware folder, I have the middleware.dart file 
and within this file I have the actual uh, logic where I actually call the API URL and fetch a list of 10 users. So I am checking to see if the action that has been triggered is a fetch API data action. So I actually then call the fetch users function and then this function is an asynchronous function and it calls the API URL and returns a list of 10 users asynchronously. And once that data is returned uh, from the API with the list of those 10 users, it then dispatches the API data loaded action with the actual list of those users. And within my reducers folder, I am actually defining all my reducers. So my app reducer function will accept a state, which is my application state and an action. So the initial state is passed in as a parameter, which is the state parameter. And then based on the action, it will actually derive a new state based on all these different reducers that are in play. So whatever action is happening at the end of that action, I will actually get a new state. So moving on within the selectors folder, I have the selectors.dart file and this will allow me to select a particular object within my state. Within the store folder, I have the store.dart file which defines my Redux store. So this basically creates a store asynchronously and my store passes in the reducer, it passes in the initial state and it passes in the middleware. Now, the initial state has been defined in my app state. So in my app state, I have defined the initial state where I have set the values of the bold and italics as false. And I have set the font size to an initial size. And I have set the user list to be an empty list. And if I look at my state in a bit more detail, I can see that this is the information that is held within my state, which is the value of bold, the italics, the value of the font size and a list of users. Now going back to the home.dart screen, I can see that this is a UI from where I dispatch all my actions. So under the drop down button for the font size, I dispatch the set font size action. Similarly, under the bold checkbox, when the on change event is called, I dispatch the toggle bold action and similarly for italics, I dispatch the toggle italics action. On the same screen, home.dart, I also define my view model, which is the data that I require to be updated in the UI. So in my home screen, I have the bold italics and the font size that is required. So I define that in my view model and then in my store connector, I pass the app state and the view model and then it gets the view model from the store and then the builder passes the view model as a parameter. This view model can then be used to update the values in my controls. So for my drop down button, I am actually passing the view model font size here. Similarly, for my bold checkbox, I am passing the view model bold parameter and italic checkbox, I pass the view model italic parameter. Now let's have a look at the application once again in action. So as soon as I change the font size, it will go and update the UI. So what it's actually doing internally with Redux, the user action is dispatched to a reducer and the reducer will go and update the store, which will then come back and update the view. Similarly, the bold italics and with the API call when I call the load users button it actually goes into the middleware to make a call to the API URL. So this concludes the Flutter Redux demo application and I hope you find this video useful and thanks a lot for watching.